Hello and welcome to the Cellcast Presents Untangling Kingdom Hearts, Episode Zero Introduction. This is the beginning of what I'm assuming is going to be a long journey, especially for me, uh, going through the entire Kingdom Hearts saga as it currently stands to try and untangle the definitely earned reputation that it has as being a very convoluted plot. It's convoluted, though, in my opinion, the same way that a seven-series television show might be considered to have a convoluted plot, or like how uh, currently the uh, MCU kind of has a convoluted plot, because a lot has occurred uh, in the last uh, 20 years since the first game came out. But for those that don't know, let me start from the beginning. What actually is Kingdom Hearts? Kingdom Hearts is an action JRPG created by Square Enix for Disney. There is a popular misconception that this is a crossover story between uh, classic Disney movies and Final Fantasy. I say that's a misconception because... I remember even early on uh, Tetsuya Nomura, the game's director and um, essentially showrunner, uh, saying that this was the Final Fantasy characters were there simply to fill roles that they would have normally used written original characters to be, but they did not have the resources at the time in order to create new characters. So they took the Final Fantasy characters that were most like the archetypes that they were writing and used that to fill out the story. And this continues to be Tetsuya Nomura's reasoning now as to why the Final Fantasy and Square Enix uh, uh, characters have fallen off. It's because now they have enough uh, Kingdom Hearts original characters to fill roles that they don't really need the Final Fantasy or Square Enix characters anymore. But the problem is, and this is my opinion, I think the opinion of many others, it doesn't matter if they're not needed anymore they're part of the DNA of the franchise at this point. But um, I'll get more into some of that stuff later. I can tell you a part of the reason why the Kingdom Hearts plot seems so convoluted is because Tetsuya Nomura has a tendency when he's writing a new story to say, what cool unexpected thing can we happen And then later on realize, oh, we need to fill in the plot hole created by that thing that didn't quite match up with, you know, what came before. So admittedly, some plot points used to mean one thing. Now they mean other things. Some plot points are there solely because a decision was made that caused some retconning to need to be done. And... Admittedly, that makes a very convoluted plot in order to keep up with. And yet, Kingdom Hearts is still one of the most popular franchises of video games out there, and it's one I continue to love to this day, almost because of how convoluted it is. But I do recognize that for newcomers at this point to the series, may have some trouble parsing what games do they need to play, how many games there actually are, what order to play the games in, and even when you're playing the games, what moments are important to look at. And that's part of the reason I'm starting uh, this. But I'm not starting in a place I think most people would consider natural. And the reason I'm doing that is twofold. But before I explain that, I need to explain how Kingdom Hearts is set up. Kingdom Hearts is currently split into three general story arcs. There is the Dark Seeker Saga that that started Kingdom Hearts back in 2002 and was uh, wrapped up with Kingdom Hearts 3. There is the Key series, which is a prequel uh, series that takes place before all of Kingdom Hearts, somewhere back in what's known as the Age of Fairy Tales, And then there's the upcoming saga starting with Kingdom Hearts 4 called uh, the Lost Master Arc. Now, the thing is, 
I just said Kingdom Hearts 3 and 4, so you might be looking at going, oh, that's only four games, maybe a couple side stories over in that uh, key series thing. Exactly. Is that all the games there are? Well, not exactly. There are quite a number of games. So in production order, you've got Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 2, Kingdom Hearts Coded, Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance, Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep, A Fragmentary Passage, Kingdom Hearts 3 plus the Remind DLC, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. You've got the keys in the key series. You've got Kingdom Hearts Key, Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key, and Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, which are all now the same game. Kingdom Hearts Key Back Cover, which is a movie based on the backstory of Union Cross. Kingdom Hearts Dark Road, and then in the upcoming uh, Lost Master arc, you've got Kingdom Hearts Missing Link on phones, and then Kingdom Hearts 4. So yeah, there's quite a number of games. Uh, but you might be asking yourself if I'm going to play through this while you're going, while you're talking about, it, or if I want to just play through this and listen to this later, how do I go about that? Well, the first thing you need to go looking for is kingdom hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 HD remix on that was released on PS4. It's also now on Xbox and on PC there is a cloud version of those games on Switch. Only use those if you've got a very good internet connection. Um, then get Kingdom Hearts 2.8. Then Kingdom Hearts 3. Then I am conflicted whether or not to tell you to get Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. Because for the most part, there's not a lot of story in Melody of Memory. Except for like at the very end. Just because of how that gameplay works. But I will talk about the rest of that when I do the Melody of Memory story and then you got kingdom hearts union cross which actually is where i'm actually starting and the reason i'm starting here is is for two reasons a you do need to get to uh, uh union cross before you get to kingdom hearts 3 i did not know this before my initial playthrough of kingdom hearts 3 two or three years ago and the other reason is I have not actually looked at Union Cross myself. And it's very obvious looking at the trailers for Kingdom Hearts 4, or the one trailer we've seen so far as of this recording, that he is pulling from that going forward, at least from what little research I have done, because I didn't want to spoil myself since I was planning on going through this also. And that's kind of why I'm starting there. So if you're looking at this wondering, how does anybody keep up with it? Even I messed up because I had no con idea that the cell phone game was actually an important game in the lore enough that Tetsuya Nomura would have to pull from it to tell you what's going on. Even I didn't know that before Kingdom Hearts 3 came out and all of a sudden there's a character I've never seen before except for what little I saw in uh, back back cover. Key, uh, Kingdom Hearts key back cover. And uh, there's a moment in there where it's like, oh, look, all these obvious uh, usernames are being listed here as helping Sora. Uh, wow, I, this is interesting. Um, the fact that they have dug, the fact that Tetsuya Nomura has dug in with this so far is the reason why I feel like somebody needs to go through it and that's and that's something i've just decided to go ahead and take on for myself so yeah i am starting there with kingdom hearts key back cover because literally it's the one i don't know anything about i i know it takes place like before like everything happens um i know there's like one or two characters from that that are ha, are actually connected to characters that happen in the main story and but that's about as far as i know so next time what i'm going to talk about is introduce kingdom hearts uh, union cross talk about the some stuff that's uh, concurrent with that game and i may even go ahead and go over the first cutscene because 
at this point, I'll just go ahead and let y'all know. Kingdom Hearts key, uh, Kingdom Hearts Union Cross was a cell phone MMO game that by, as of this recording, is no longer in service. So since the game itself is offline, what Square Enix has been very nice to do is place the cutscenes uh, there where you can watch it in theater mode. The only problem, from what I understand, is the cutscenes are collected via the worlds that they take place on, not exactly in the order they are in. So I am using a list that says, here's what world it's on, here's the name of the cutscene, uh, the, you know, lists out the order of those cutscenes, and that's what I'm going off of. So yet, yeah, join me next time as I begin my own journey for the first time through a Kingdom Hearts game with Union Cross, even though I'm only going to be watching the cutscenes, and uh, join me then. But in the meantime, this has been Drew, and I'll catch you in the next frame. The Cellcast is a member of the Pop Americana and Culture Box Media Networks. For more information about shows in those networks, please check the links in the description. The Cellcast presents Untangling Kingdom Hearts as a production of the Cellcast podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at cast underscore cell, on Facebook at the Cellcast, on Twitch at the Cellcast Gaming, and you can email us at the Cellcast Podcast at gmail.com or visit us on our webpage at the Cellcast.podbean.com. Our theme music is Trinity by Tyler Spirian and is a remix of of the song Dearly Beloved by Yoko Shimomura from the franchise Kingdom Hearts. The Cellcast podcast has no affiliation with Square Enix, Disney, or for that matter anyone else connected to the Kingdom Hearts franchise. The Cellcast Presents Untangling Kingdom Hearts is a fan production and no copyright infringement is intended or implied. Kingdom Hearts is owned by both Disney and Square Enix. This podcast also is not intended to be a replacement for playing the games. Please go and play them yourself.